So in this next example, we explore finding an explicit description for the null of matrix A. And we've already done this before. We've, we've found explicit descriptions for the general solution to a homogeneous equation or a non-homogeneous equation back in chapter one. And we're doing the same thing here. So to get started, if we're asked to find the spanning set of the null of matrix A, such that we have this two by four matrix, one, three, five, zero, and zero, one, four, negative two. The first thing that we need to do is find a parametric description for the homogeneous equation. So to do that, we want to row reduce the homogeneous equation. Right, so matrix A times vector X equals a zero vector, but we're gonna convert it to its equivalent augmented matrix. So we want to row reduce the augmented matrix to row reduced echelon form. So we have matrix A, so 1, 0, 3, 1, 5, 4, 0, negative 2. And you can either incorporate a column vector for the zero vector or leave it just as that matrix A. So we're looking at our matrix here. Our first pivot is good, so we don't have to worry about column one. Moving to the second pivot, we want to use the second pivot to eliminate the entry above it. So in other words, we need minus three times the second row plus that first row to attain the new first row. And so this is equivalent to, so we have zero plus one is one, negative three plus three is zero. Minus 12 plus 5 is negative 7, and then positive 6 plus 0 is 6, and then the second row stays as it is. 0, 1, 4, minus 2. And with one sweep, we've obtained row reduced echelon form. All right, and so, of course, we know that this row reduced echelon form is equivalent to the linear system x sub 1 minus x sub 3 plus 6x sub 4 is equal to 0, and then row 2 gives us that x sub 2, plus 4 times x sub 3, minus 2 times x sub 4 is equal to the 0 vector. So these are our basic variables, and then we can further rewrite this. Solving for those basic variables, we have the system x sub 1 is equal to 7 times x sub 3, minus 6 times x sub 4, we know that x sub 2 can be redefined as negative 4 times x sub 3 plus 2 times x sub 4. And we know that x sub 3 and x sub 4 are free. So they could be any real number our little heart's desire. So we have the solution set here. And what we want to do next to find the spanning set is to rewrite this general solution as a parametric vector. So we want to find the parametric vector form of our general solution. So we know vector x here is in R4, so we have our four components x sub one, x sub two, x sub three, x sub 4, and plugging in what we just found, our x sub 1 row is 7 times x sub 3 minus 6 times x sub 4. x sub 2 is defined as negative 4 x sub 3 plus 2 x sub 4. We know that x sub 3 is free, so we'll just put x sub 3 in that column. And then x sub 4 is also free, so we put an x sub 4 in that column, right, such that x sub 3 and x sub 4 are scalars, any scalar your little heart desires. But in order to find the spanning set of the null of matrix A, we need to see the column vector. So scalar multiples are the linear combination of the column vectors. So if it helps, remember, incorporate zeros in with your free variables. And so we can rewrite our beautiful final answer here. So we have that vector x is equal to the linear combination x sub 3 multiplied by the column vector 7, negative 4, 1, 
0 plus x sub 4 multiplied by the column vector negative 6, 2, 0, 1. And again, this is such that x sub 3 and x sub 4 are any scalars. And so this is the general solution to our set. But again, we're looking for the spanning set of A. So let's make a little love note here to ourselves. And we want to note that every linear combination of these two column vectors is going to be an element of the null of A because it produces a solution to the homogeneous equation. So we can say that every linear combination of the vectors, and let's, I'm going to say that this is vector u and this is vector v. So every linear combination of vector u and vector v is an element of the null of a. Right, because it's in the solution set of the homogeneous equation. And so therefore, since the span is the set of, or the collection of all possible linear combinations, we can say that therefore, the span of these two vectors, u and v, or 7, negative 4, 1, 0, and negative 6, 2, 0, 1, is in the null of A. Right, this is the spanning set. It is the collection of all possible linear combinations. So we can make some important observations from this example. So as we proceed to look at our observations here, I'm going to use, so for our general solution, I'm going to define this as vector x is equal to x sub 3 times vector u plus x sub 4 times vector v, just for a shorthand. And this spanning set is the set containing vector u and vector v. All right, so some conclusions observed from this example are the following. So the first one, if we're thinking about the spanning set of the null of A, we can see because there's only two vectors in the span that the spanning set is linearly independent. They have no scalar multiples. And so this is actually a general conclusion that we can make. So we can say that matrix A times vector X equals the zero vector has only the trivial solution by definition. We can also say that vector x defined as the linear combination x sub 3 times vector u plus x sub 4 times vector v is equal to the zero vector if and only if or when the weights are both zero. X sub 3 and X sub 4 are all zero. So the spanning set of the null of A is linearly independent. And again, this one was easy to see, but it will hold true. So then the second conclusion that we can observe from this example is that when the null of A contains non-zero vectors, then the number of vectors in the spanning set is equal to the number of free variables. Which is pretty easy to see. So the number of vectors in the spanning set will be equal to the number of free variables.